Learn the latest Yusuf for Makoko news as we now turn our attentions away from Endrick to target the Borussia Dortmund wonder kids. On top of this, let's discuss the future of Hakim Ziyech with reports suggesting that AC Milan are now the favourites to sign him in January. So we have a ton of things to break down and discuss today, my friends. I hope you guys definitely enjoy. I want to give my thoughts and opinions behind Makoko. I want to break down his game and why I think there could be a possibility in signing the player. So I hope you guys definitely enjoy. Hit that like button, get involved in the comments. But before we continue on, I need to get one massive plug out of the way first. Today's video is brought to you by OneFootball. With the World Cup currently going on, OneFootball is the perfect app to have to stay up to date to all the latest World Cup news straight on your phone. But there's one very interesting, exciting thing that OneFootball are currently doing. I'm going to show you guys quickly on screen now. If you have OneFootball, of course, download it in the link below. Click on Profile. And as you guys can see on profile, there is a special quiz that you can play to participate and enjoy those World Cup vibes. As you can see, here's an idea of how some of the questions work. Uh, for example, who won the first World Cup in 1930? That was definitely Uruguay. I know I got that right, 100%. Which nation holds the most records for most World Cups won? Easily Brazil. I mean, you guys are getting the drift. So currently over 300,000 people are playing the quiz. Get involved right now, have fun you guys, and you'll find a link below in the description. So right now, let's discuss the latest news around Hakim Ziyech, and it does seem like Ziyech will finally be able to leave this club in January, with AC Milan currently being the main favourites to sign him, finally. Reports are suggesting that Ziyech naturally is not part of Graham Potter's plans, which I'm not too sure as to why, but I can kind of understand it already. We know that Ziyech was priced out from a deadline move back to Ajax and naturally if we want to spend money we also have to sell players as well too to generate some income and revenue to spend. So Ziyech so far is one of our most sellable assets at this point in time. I think he's having a very good World Cup too. Uh, I like that relationship on the right hand side alongside Hakimi and hopefully Morocco can do it for Africa and find themselves a place in the semi-finals. That would just be unreal. But anyway, let's go back to AC Milan. They feel like Ziyech is the main man for the right hand sides. They put in tons of scan reports on him. Of course, a lot of uh, transfer officials at AC Milan like Maldini are personally suggesting and recommending Ziyech needs to be signed for them. And it seems like Ziyech shares the same thoughts because even though he was close to returning back to Ajax, that was merely for game time reasons because of course the World Cup is coming. But ideally, Ziyech wants to continue to test himself out in one of the higher divisions across Europe. You know, he's kind of already completed the Eredivisie. You're not going to improve as a player returning back. So now it's on AC Milan to find an agreement, of course, to buy Ziyech. Now, reports in Italy suggest that Milan want to pay a loan fee up front. And then once that loan fee is over, they want to pay around 50 million euros to sign Ziyech on a permanent deal. Now, naturally, his contract is winding down. He's getting no extensions. We can't be commanding the 40 million that we originally were asking for in the last summer window. That was way too much money. But there could be some possibilities now that we could be looking to become a bit more lenient in regards to selling ZX to AC Milan. It's reported that Ziek is more than happy to lower his wages to force a move to AC Milan. And he likes the idea of reinventing himself playing in Serie A. I mean, to end with the story, you guys, I'm just hoping that whatever we do involves Ziek and Rafael Leal. Uh, of course, Milan currently are hoping that they can still persuade Leao to stay. It seems like Leao is open to contract talks after the World Cup, but hopefully money can talk. Hopefully we can do business now to get this deal over the line. I'm hoping that AC Milan can't find any ways, of course, to, uh, you know, fulfill the financial demands that Leao ideally wants because we know that he owes quite a bit of his money, like literally every month in regards to paying back Sporting Lisbon. And this is where we can come through. So hopefully Ziyech, money, other players are involved to get this deal over the line because I need to see a top class attacking player representing my football club. It seems like we'll have to say farewell to Ziyech. Personally, I'm a little bit uh, uh, annoyed by the fact that we never really saw this guy's main potential and ability. The moment we moved to playing with attacking mids in our front three, 
There's no space for wingers. You know, you're complaining about your Pulisic and your ZX and many of these guys. Yo, they're not attacking midfield players. They play out wide. And it's a shame that we have wing backs out wide instead of guys like ZX who really could have helped a lot in terms of creativity and goal scoring. But hopefully he can go to Milan where he can shine and... Listen, you guys know that Hakim Ziyech is someone that I definitely rate. So right now, let's continue the story. And let's briefly discuss some depressing news surrounding Endrick and Real Madrid. I guess reality's finally kicked me in my potato head, you guys. You know, I was, uh, I was hopeful that something could happen. You know, I was hopeful that we could persuade him with our sporting projects that we are the football club to go to. But I knew deep down, really, that Real Madrid, if they're calling for Endrick, most likely are going to sign him. And it's quite obvious that Benzema will leave, Endlich will be that replacement, and he'll have a front three playing alongside Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo. And wow, is this a dangerous attack for the next few seasons, you guys. It's incredible. But Real Madrid have finally won the race to sign Endrick. They will be paying around 60 million plus 12 million on top, taking the total deal to around 72 million. Now, we didn't lose the battle because we got priced out. We lost it because Endrick and his camp and his team felt like he would develop better at Real Madrid. And after seeing many of his countrymen prospering at Real Madrid and the focus on these massive clubs and signing top young players, uh, it only made sense that Endrick decided, listen, Real Madrid is the club for me. I think for me, to end with this point, you guys, I feel like there's definitely lessons to be learned here. Uh, unfortunately, unless we can really, uh, you know, build our branding, you know, really show top young football players that Chelsea Football Club is the club to go for. I think we're going to continue to lose the race when it comes to signing the very best young players in Europe. I'm looking at Jude Bellingham and you're thinking clubs like Madrid and Liverpool, for example, could even have an advantage now over us. And, you know, realistically, when you want to entice the very best of what the game can offer at a youth level, you need to have legacy. You have to have some history. You know, you need to have something that attracts these guys because these are the players that will be the ones to win you trophies for your big clubs and you know they want to continue to become part of a legacy set before them by other world-class players that were left behind and I feel like we can get there but it's not going to happen in one or two seasons I think it needs to be like a decade-long project we'll have to target the next youths coming out from like I don't know the 2010s the, the, the 2020s even that type of age group but it's a necessary thing that has to be done because we can't afford to be missing out on some of the game's very best players and to entice them, you have to be a lot more attractive in terms of your history, your football and your ability to win on the field too. So right now, let's end things by discussing the massive story surrounding our efforts to sign Makoko from Borussia Dortmund. Now that we've lost out on signing Endrick, uh, is it any surprise that we are turning our attentions now to Makoko? I don't think so. And the main reason as to why is that his contract does expire next summer, June 2023. And when one of the most devastating young forwards across Europe, a guy that has broken records for fun uh, at Borussia Dortmund's Youth Academy, is available on a free. This is the type of player that can become a 100 million valuated player. If you can sign him for free, you must go for it. I think Makoko is an exceptional talent left footed, uh, very stocky, uh, he's 5'10". Some people may think he's too young, he's too small, but remember, you're signing these guys because they're gonna develop, they're gonna get better, grow into their physique more. And I like Makoko because he's like one of those like Aguero-ish style players where they can create their own opportunities out from nothing. I think that's what separates like the top, top, top tier strikers from strikers who are just very good and were very system reliant as well too but uh it seems like if we have any hopes of signing makoko it's not going to be very simple now let's take things back a step now this story came out from england from the secret scout who these guys yeah they have their sources they know a lot of players and coaches in the game if they report on something it's not bs and i stand by that so we have presented makoko and his team a five year plus one year extension on top to take the total valuation to around six years try to entice him to sign with how expensive Endrick has become in the end to sign someone like Makoko who's on that same type of talent caliber on a free is a no-brainer but I guess things aren't as simple as they look for us reports are saying that Barcelona may be leading uh 
all the clubs in the race are signed Makoko. Of course, we know that they don't have much uh, freedom and the flexibility to spend money in the windows. They've been targeting a lot of players on a free deal. And Bas were hoping that the fact that Makoko is a Barcelona fan and the fact that they can give him that project where they can develop him alongside the great young talents like Javi, Petri, Anzu Fati, etc, etc. That does make Barcelona now a very attractive club. And it would be incredible to see this battle between like Makoko at Barca and Endrick at Real Madrid's pitch, there's a possibility that could be the reality. In my personal opinion, I think there's a higher chance that Makoko remains at Dortmund or does get enticed and does sign for Barcelona. You'd have to hope that we can really offer Makoko a great wage packet and of course, really show him that you can grow and develop here. And I think that is the main issue that has stopped us getting a lot of top young talents, you guys. Uh, I think the last time we signed one of Europe's best young team forwards, was Lukaku like nearly 10 years ago. Now, back when he first signed, he was not used by Vilas Boas. There was no real development plan to get him in the first team. And Lukaku only became that player he currently is after leaving us to develop elsewhere. That is not a good sign. Since then, I think maybe Reese James is our biggest success stories, followed by like your Mason Mounts and a few of these guys. But uh, again, you know, it's a different story when you're trying to integrate team talents into your team. And I don't think we've had the best records at being able to do that. I say this because McCorko has stressed that, uh, like Hendrik, the project is the most important thing. Now, Dortmunds, they are currently back in the running now to get him to sign a new extension. That's because they replaced Rose with their new manager in Tezic, I think, and he's been giving him more game time. Currently, Dortmund have offered Makoko a four million a year contract. However, Makoko's camp and team feels like he can earn around six million a year instead. And when it comes to finances, you guys know that we have the money to pay whatever we need to to sign the best players we can possibly get. You know, I don't want to like get things a bit too hyped or gassed. Of course, we we're close for Endrick, but we weren't close enough. And it could be a similar thing with Makoko, unless Potter, the club, can really entice this guy to sign for us. And I think if we can get him, it will be an incredible coup because this guy is one of the next ones to blow. Not only is he talented, not only does he have the right technique, not only is he an incredible finisher for his age as well too, but he has the right mentals. I mean, this is a player that has had this pressure on him since he was like a preteen. And, you know, he's constantly demonstrated and shown that his focus is only on becoming the best he can. Uh, the stories of how this guy will literally, uh, you know, go through recordings of his games, recordings of other players to just assess every detail to improve in the next game. You know, when a kid's doing something like that, when he's that focused at this age, they're the ones that go right to the very top. So if you guys, so right now you guys, share your thoughts and opinions. Do you think there's a possibility we can sign him? If yes, say why. If no, then of course you're gonna say your piece. So on that note, I'm in the EFC, this is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.